The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Ninth chapter, text number four, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 23rd of April, 1976, in Melbourne, Australia. Sri Rupam Chakrajatam So, God, sometimes some foolish question is there, can you show me God? The answer God is giving. I have a view. If you have eyes to see, you can see me. So, actually, God is everywhere. Otherwise, how is God? God means the great, but we do not know how great He is. We simply say God is great, but you have no idea how God is great. That is explained in the Vedic literature that He is everywhere. God is everywhere. Annantara sangaparamanuchayantara sam Ekapasaurachayatam jagadanda koti. There are material world means, there are innumerable universes. You can't, just like you cannot count the stars and planets. You are every day you are seeing. At least at night you see. But can you count it? No. That is not possible. So this is only one universe, the universe in which our planet, this earthy planet is situated. It is a teeny planet. Out of many millions of planets, this is one. So we cannot even calculate this one planet, in which portion, which direction, which country is there, how many population, what is there, we have no calculation. This is God's creation. Anything you take, you cannot count it in your hair. You claim this is my hair. Can you count it? No, that is God's creation. Everywhere God is present and everything is innumerable, beyond our counting capacity. In this way God is situated. Antarbahi. He is situated outside, he is situated inside also. Krishna says, and this is quite reasonable, otherwise how is God? It's like I am here, you are here, but you are not in your apartment. You are absent from your apartment. But God, if God means he is in his apartment and he is everywhere. There is the rascals they claim that I am God. How what kind of God you are? Are you everywhere spread? So you should not accept such cheap God. God's description is there in this hastra. Ekapasurachayatam Jagadanda Koji. One part, uh, one portion is Paramatma, the super soul. In his Super soul feature, he is present in innumerable universes. Ekapasura chayatam jagadanda koti. Jagadanda means the universe. It is just like an egg. The ondo, ondo means egg. The form is like egg. So there are millions. So to maintain the Millions and millions of universes, by his one portion, Paramatma, he is praying. He is called Kirodoksai Vishnu. This is a great science. God expands himself in so many ways, and for the material world, he is expanded as Purusavata. 
कारण दक्षाई विष्णु गर्भोद अक्षाई विष्णु किरोद अक्षाई विष्णु इज एक्सपैंडिंग लाइक दैट कॉज आर लोस एंड द कॉज आर लोस एंड ही इज लाइंग दैट स्लीपिंग विद इन दोश एंड एंड फ्रॉम इज ब्रीदिंग द यूनिवर्सेस आर कमिंग आउट दिस इज गॉड बिकॉज he is in a sleeping condition that is expansion of god that is not original god original god is krishna but he can expand himself advaita yachyate anadi ananta roopam adyam purana purusham namajo vanancha there is god just have some idea what is god so as karana vak sai vishnu he is sleeping within the ocean and as soon as there is question of sleeping there is breathing also the bubbles the bubbles are expanding as universe jas sai ganish sasita kalam athavalamya jivanti loma milaja jagadandana so breathing means exhaling inhaling so when the breathing is air is coming out innumerable inverses are coming into form and when is inhaling then all of them becoming annihilated this is material world material world means it comes into existence at a certain day it remains for some time it gives so many by products and it expands and then dwindles then finishes Uh, this is material. Everything. Your body is like that. My body is like that. The whole universe is like that. So here it is explained. Maya tato midam sarvam. This is God's impersonal expansion. When we cannot understand God, then we come first to the impersonal feature everywhere. Pantheism, which is known as in philosophical term pantheism, there are different, um, I would say, ideas and philosophical propositions. So this Maya Tattva Vedam, but the pantheist, because the materialist thinker, are limited. They think that God is everywhere. That for Uh, there is no personal God. That is foolish, foolish lens. He is everywhere. It is explained here. Maya tathamidam sadma. By me, Maya means by me. By me or by my energy, I am expanded everywhere. Maya, this this word, it is causative. Causative means I have caused. The example is, if you want to understand, the example is very simple. <laughs> Just like as soon as the sun is risen, immediately the sun sign is expanded. The other day while coming here, we saw how within a second the sun arose from the sea water. Not from the sea; it looks like that. Immediately, within a second, the whole World became illuminated immediately within a second. So, the what is this illumination? It is the expansion of the sun sign. But the because the expansion is there, it does not mean the sun globe is finished. The sun globe is there, and within the sun globe, the sun god is there. Are the Predominating personality of the sun globe is there. His name is also known to us. His name is Bhuvasha. Just like in America, the president name is Paul. And those are intelligent person. He knows. Are your president? Similarly, every planet there is a president. There is chief person. And the name are recorded in the Vedic literature, and in the Bhagavad Gita you find that Krishna, sometimes some forty millions of years ago, 
calculated 40 or 400, some millions of years. He met the sun god and he spoke Bhagavad Gita. Imanga Vivasati Yugam Pratvana Humambayam. So we have to take information from the right source. Then you have awareness of everything. How God is expanded everywhere. You can take this example. The sun is away from us, according to the scientist's calculation, 93 millions of miles away. And immediately, within a second, his sun sign is expanded all over the universe. Immediately. At least 93 millions of miles. Within a second. So if it is possible by an ordinary material thing, Krishna, God is full spiritual. How much spiritually powerful He is that He can expand Himself all over the universe. This is called thoughtful consideration. So Krishna and Krishna says, Maya tatam idam sadnam. I am expanded everywhere. Where is the difficulty to understand? There is no difficulty. If we are sane person, if we can see that in one universe there is one sun, and this sun is so powerful, it is a material thing, and there are innumerable universes, and there are innumerable suns, one who has created the suns, how much powerful he is. This is the calculation, common sense. If one sun, which is material, if it is so powerful that for millions and millions of years it is giving its energy, heat and light, still it is so bright and powerful and temperature is so high, uh, how much powerful temperature is of God? You can just imagine. So when he says, Maya tatamidam sadbam. It is not a false pride, it is fair. Simply we must have brain to understand. Maya tatamidam sadbam. Every particle, every atom, there is presence of God. That is stated in the Annantara sangha paramanu chayantara sangha. Paramanu means the atom. God is within the atom. So God is within you also. God is outside, God is within. Outside, as you see, these five elements, what are these five elements? The same thing, expansion of God's energy. Just like we practically see, scientifically, the sun sign is the cause of this universe. Within the sun sign, all the planets have grown. And in each and every planet, due to the sun sign, the vegetables are growing. There are leaves. When there is no sun sign, it is, the leaves falls down. As soon as the sun sign is there, the colorful fruits and flowers and leaves have come out. Everything is due to the sun sign. Similarly, the supreme sun is Krishna. Jasya prabha prabhavatu jagadanda koti. He has got, just like the sun has shining. Similarly, try to understand, God has got His effulgence, bodily shining. That is called Brahma Jyoti. When the Brahma Jyoti is there, innumerable universes are generated. Therefore He is cause of all creation. It doesn't require to manufacture each and every universe. He is so powerful that in His effulgence, in His signing, innumerable universes are created. Jasya prabha prabhavatu jagadanda koti. Koti su asesa vasudhādi bhūti bhannam. In each universe there are many millions and millions of stars and planets. These are the descriptions in the basic literature. So we have to learn. You cannot by your teeny effort, with limited power, limited sense, uh, perception, you cannot speculate. You have to understand from authoritative statements 
That is called Veda. Vedas means knowledge which is perfect knowledge, and if you study Vedas, then you get perfect knowledge of everything. And the cream of the Vedic knowledge is here in the Bhagavad Gita. So if you read Bhagavad Gita carefully, then you get all the knowledge very perfectly. Here it is said, Maya tatamidam sadvam jagat abhaktam murthina. And that expansion, that impersonal expansion of bhakta, not manifested. Uh, you cannot see God in person in this expansion. Therefore, sometimes we foolishly say that, uh, can you show me God? God is there. You have to make your eyes to see. They say God is here in the temple. But somebody is thinking that this is not God, this is a statue, uh, an idol. They are worshipping idol. Supposing it is idol, but if God is everywhere, why is not in the idol? What is the argument? If God is everywhere, then why is not idol? God has the power. And actually this is not idol. This is God's energy. The same example. The sunshine is everywhere. So originally sunshine is the cause of everything. Similarly, God's effulgence is the cause of material things also. That is explained in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Bhumi rapo nalo bhagu khagamano External energy, internal energy, and marginal energy. The external energy is this material expansion and manifestation. Similarly, there is internal energy, the spiritual world manifestation, and in between them there is another energy called marginal energy, tatasa, that we are, we living entities, we are, is marginal energy. Marginal energy means we can live either in this external energy or in the internal energy, in between. So at the present moment we are living in the external energy. But this external energy is also Krishna's energy, God's energy. It is not different from Him. But the external energy means we are captivated by the external energy. But the external energy is not permanent. The internal energy is permanent. The spiritual world is permanent, and we are also permanent, jiva bhuta lahannate hannavāne sarīde. So the Krishna consciousness movement is to transfer oneself from this external energy to the internal energy. That is the purpose of all Vedic literature. Vedaiṣṭa sarvai aham eva vedaṁ to understand God and go back to home, back to Godhead. That is perfection of life. So here we are in the God's energy, there is no doubt. Mayata Masani Sarva Bhutani. Everything. Bhutani means all living entities, anything which has grown. The trees, the plants, the hills, the oceans, the sky, everything is resting in God's energy. Masani Sarva Bhutani. Naham Teshu Avastita. But it is not that the fancies, they think that if God has expanded in everything. Then whatever I worship, and that is God's worship. No. Krishna said, no, that you cannot take. The, the same example, the sun sign is not different from the sun. Because the sun sign has entered within your room, it does not mean the sun has entered. If you try to understand, then you will understand. That God is everywhere, is still. He is not everywhere. This is His inconceivable power. Therefore, if we want to worship God, then we have to worship His form, His name, name, form, quality, pastime. Then we shall realize that God is person, a supreme being, and He has got all the propensities as we have got. 
because we are part and parcel of God. We can study God's personality from our personality, uh, just like we can study the father by the symptoms of the son. This is crude example. Similarly, whatever propensities we have got, where from the propensity is coming? It is coming from God. Therefore, in the Vedanta Sutra it is said, Janmardasajataha. Everything is emanating from God. The original source of everything is God. So, when we study ourselves minutely that what is our position, or by studying ourselves, we can study the nature of God. The difference is only that He is huge, the great, we are small part. But the qualities are the same. You take a drop of the ocean water, the chemical composition is the same. The taste is the same. So that is the difference between a living entity and God. We are a small sample of God, but God is great. If we understand this philosophy, then it is not difficult to understand what is God, and then we can establish our original relationship, and if we act accordingly, then our life is successful. Thank you very much. Would you like to give your views on psychiatry? Psychiatry. 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 What is that? <laughs> uh, well, when someone is uh, having some kind of mental, mental problem, mm. the psychiatrist analyzes it from the medical point, sometimes from the psychological viewpoint. Mm. Psychiatrist. Yes. <laughs> this is this is an expansion of the energy known as mind. That is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Kanga mana buddhi devach. This is a subtle matter. So different division. God's creation is so wonderful that even if you take the at all, there are so many things that is scientists are. So what to speak of? Mind, thinking, feeling, willing, and there are so many divisions. So what is your question about the psychiatrist? It is a material thing and very subtle, and there are so many divisions. So what is your question about it? Um, is, is, um, is your yes, it is. Everything is resting on God. This is also resting on God. Is, is it necessary to have a therapeutic system? Some... <laughs> everything, first of all, we have to understand that everything is expansion of God's energy. So if you understand God, then the energies are automatically understood. Yasmin vigyate sarvametam vigyatam bhavanti. This is the basic Indian. If you try to understand God, then His energies also will be understood by you. If you know the root, if you water at the root of the tree, then the tree, whole tree becomes luxuriantly flowered. So our proposition is, you take the root, Krishna, and you will understand everything properly. From the root, if you want to understand the tree, whole tree, you try to understand it from the root, not from the top. So disease, any disease, if you understand the root cause of the disease, you can give proper medicine and his cure. So psychiatrists, generally their patients are crazy fellows. <laughs> generally they treat crazy fellows. It is not... No sane man goes to a psychiatrist. <laughs> is it not a fact? 
<laughs> so all these crazy man sometimes makes his psychiatrist a crazy also. <laughs> so the so more or less everyone is crazy. That is the it is not my layman's opinion. It is the opinion of a big medical surgeon. There was a case in the court, murder case. The murderer pleaded that I became crazy man at that time. That is generally. So the medical man was called to examine. Then he was great civil surgeon in Calcutta. So he gave his opinion in the court that so far I have treated many patients. So my opinion is that everyone is more or less a bad man. More or less. It is a question of degree. So our opinion is like that, that anyone who is not under the direct connection with God, he is a crazy man. He's a madman. Now you can treat. So we are also psychiatrists. We are pushing this Krishna consciousness. So because anyone who is in this material world, more or less crazy, madman. Because he doesn't care for God. Therefore he is crazy. He is completely under the control of God, but still he has the audacity to say, no, I don't believe you. Say so anyone who does not believe in God, he is a crazy fellow. You can treat him. <laughs> Everyone is patient. Prakita kriyamanani gunai karmani sarosa ahankar vimuratma karta ham iti mannati. This crazy fellow, he is fully under the control of material nature. And he is still thinking that he is independent. That is craziness. Everyone is thinking like that. Everyone is a patient of psychiatrists. How we can declare independence? There is no independence. You are completely dependent on the laws of material nature. Prakita kriyamana, unai karmana. Janma mitta jarabhyadi dukkha dosana darsana. This is knowledge. Nobody wants to die, but nature says you must die. Where is your independence? Huh? Nobody wants to take birth or enter into the mother's home, but you must enter. Nobody wants to become old man. Nature says you must become old man. Nobody wants disease. The nature says, you must have disease. So where is your independence? But the crazy fellow says, I am independent. I think like this. What is the value of your thinking? You may think in your favor, but the nature will not allow it. So everyone is crazy who is declaring independence. He is a crazy. Then any question? Yes, this question is very nice. Anyone who does not believe in God, does not surrender to God, he is a crazy fellow. Hmm. Uh, um, Chikata He wants to know uh, what's the best activity to be formed to go back to Gadi. You are already performing Hare Krishna chant, very easy, sir. Savanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam. That is the best education. To hear about God, to chant about God, to think about God, to worship God. In this way there are nine processes recommended. You are following that, at least trying to follow. Then when you are perfect, then you go. Taktade hang punarjanmanaiti, namar material body. You follow sickly, 
the devotional process. There are nine different ways. But if you simply hear about God, then you also become perfect. Any one of them, you take nine of them, eight of them, seven of them, six of them, five of them, at least one you take and you keep perfect. One must take. Just like Maharaj Parikhit, he took only one. He listened to Sukadeva Goswami, hearing. He became perfect. Sukadeva Goswami, he simply chanted. He became perfect. Savanam kirtanam Vishnu, smaranam padasivanam, archanam bhat, bandhanam dasam satyam arjuna. He simply took Krishna as the best friend. He became perfect. That is Bhagavad Gita. He has accepted Krishna as the best friend. Krishna, although I am talking with you as friend, but I know what you are. So I am perplexed. Kindly give me lesson. Shishasri Ham Sarimang Prapannam. My dear Krishna, I am surrendering unto you. I accept you as my spiritual master. Kindly teach me. So he became perfect by making Krishna his friend. So nine processes, any process you take and do it perfectly, then you become perfect. So we are opening different centers all over the world. At least if they come and hear about Krishna, they will become perfect. Without doing anything. Simply by hearing, hearing. Savanam kirtanam Vishnu smaranam pātasi. It is very easy. It is not at all difficult. What is the difficulty? God has given us ear, and if we simply hear, listen what Krishna says, we become perfect. What if you hear in your heart but don't act in your life? Hmm? What if you hear but don't act accordingly in your, in your practical life? You feel it in your heart. But hear means you do it in practical life. Otherwise, what is the hearing? That that's like one stone that he has got a ear. That, that is not nothing. Hearing means it will react. That is hearing. The more you hear, it will react. And then you will practically do it. But everything comes by hearing. So hearing is so important. Just like even in your ordinary education, you go to the school college and hear from the professor. Hearing is so important. And then you become perfect. You take your degrees. Similarly, the science of God, you simply hear about it. Samaram kītana. Then gradually it will purify. Hearing means purifying the dirty things within the heart. That is hearing. Chita-dhatpana-mārjana. Sinnatāna sakatā kṛṣṇa panna savana kītana. Because it is spiritual, hearing has got a potency to purify. This is not ordinary hearing. This is spiritual hearing. So it has got a potency. Sinnatāna sakatā kṛṣṇa punna savana kītana. Anyone who takes part in this process of hearing and chanting, he becomes pious, purified. Just like if you touch somewhere or other the fire, it will act. Similarly, Krishna is spiritual. You hear about Krishna, then it will act, then it will be purified. Yeah. Any other question? Shri Prabhupada, how can we understand um, why the, the Krishna consciousness movement seems to attract so many young boys and young girls in the Western world? Tax. Tax? Attracts. 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 Attracts so many young people and not so much um, the middle-aged and older people in the Western world. Hmm. Not only Western world, everywhere. Therefore they are called old fools. (laughs) 
<laughs> Because they require time to forget what they have learned. Young men, they are receptive. Therefore, for education, younger age is recommended. There is a history. One father and one daughter, they both appeared for BA examination. The father fell and the daughter passed. The younger generation, they can receive very nicely. Older generation, it is little difficult. Therefore it is recommended by Pralharma, Komaro Asadet Pragya Dharmana Bhagavatani. Dhrulavanga Mani Sani Jarma. Tadapi or Dhrubam. He recommended, my dear friends, Pralad Maharaj was five years old war, and he was preaching Krishna consciousness in his classroom. When the teachers are out, he would preach Krishna consciousness. So then friends would request, my dear Pralad, Uh, let us play, this is deep in our head. And he said, No, 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 my dear friend. Komaro Asadit Pragna Dharmano Bhagavadani. Immediately, we are now young boys, this is the time to learn. Komaro, Komaro means uh, between five to ten years. This is the time. Dharmano Bhagavadani. Why? Dhrulavanga Mahana Samyam. Don't think that your life is guaranteed. We can die at any moment. Better understand the science of God in this early age. This is Pallad Mahadeva's recommendation. Huh? So this um, Bhagavad Dharma, uh, Krishna consciousness, should be learned from the very beginning. Then it will be solid. By nature's way, younger generation, they capture very nicely. Yes. This question was asked by many gentlemen to me, why younger generation attract? Because they are receptive. This is the age. We don't waste time. From the very beginning of life, when we can talk, when we can walk, Learn Krishna consciousness, chant Hare Krishna, life will be successful. We are therefore opening so many gurukuls to teach from the very beginning of life. Brahmachari gurukule basandanta guru ritam. They should be trained now how to offer respect to guru, to superior. These things are not taught. The basic system is first brahmachari, then grihastha. That is, that is compulsory. Brahmachari, grihastha, maraprastha, sanna. Four divisions. First of all, he must be trained up, first class brahmachari, after twenty-five years. And then, if he likes, he can enter into family life. That is also up to fifty years. Naturally, A person, after being trained up as brahmachari, enters family life. He cannot stay in family life for all the days. Fifty years, when the sons are grown up, uh, say twenty years, twenty-five years, then he can retire from family life. That is called manaprastha. The wife can remain as assistant. Uh, not for any other purpose. Then when he's fully prepared, the wife goes to the care of elderly children and the man takes on nurse. But this culture is lost. Now, unless one is shot dead, he would not leave family life. <laughs> Even Mahatma Gandhi, he got independence and everything, he still he would not leave. So you are shot dead. <laughs> This is our position. Hmm. All politicians are big, big men. They are not going to deter. They stuck up. <laughs> This is not civilization. When one is young, he can remain with family, wife, children, twenty-five to fifty years. That's all. No more. 
विवाह देन टेक बार ऑफ पुस्तक ट्रेन आर योर सेल्फ पर बिगैन इन सन्नेस एंड देन टेक सन्नेस सिंपली फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग गॉड देर इज सन्नेस You can take sunrise from the very beginning, but if it is not possible, at least at the fag end of your life, everyone should take sunrise and completely devote in understanding the science of God. That is called sunrise. This is basic system. But not sunrise. Now it is foolishly going as Hindu dharma. What is Hindu dharma? Hindu is not found even in the scriptures. This is a name given by the Mahavadans. Sindhu. There is a river, Sindhu. From Sindhu it has come Hindu. Actually, the Vedic culture is varna samdharma. Four varnas and four ashramas. That is real Vedic culture. How to create Brahmana, Khatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, Sanda. Eight. This is called Varnasamdhan. Varnasamacharavata Purusheena Parakpuma. Vishnu Aradhati Pumsa. Nanna Takto Sukha. Actually, human civilization begins when this institution of Varnasam is accepted. Other is animal civilization. Eating, sleeping, meeting, and dancing. That's all. All right. Thank you. <laughs>